So my name is Alex Yosu. I'm the founder and president of Hardware Club. Um, Hardware Club, uh, we basically started three years ago um, with the idea that it, hardware was hard and that it, was, it would be easier um, to create a community of founders that could help each other uh, grow through the, um, the issues that you know, many founders face. Um, and so we created a community-based organization, um, a venture firm um, that you know, we started with 30 companies uh, three years ago and now we gather uh, a bit more than 300 companies um, in 30 different countries, um, which basically right now represents a bit more than 700 founders. So why do uh, companies want to join? They want to join for um, two main reasons. The first one is the community itself, uh, the idea that they can actually work with other founders. So we have a Slack group with uh, more than 1,000 members um, talking about very different and very technical subjects sometimes um, and knowledge that is actually inside the community. So we're selective, we only accept five to seven companies, five to seven percent, sorry, of companies that apply to join. Um, and since a few months, we actually closed a, a, um, a debit fund, that's $30 million, um, out of which we've made 16 investments already. Um, one of um, um, uh, which is actually uh, in, in New York um, and is going to talk a bit uh, later tonight. Um, yeah, so our experience of, I, I'll talk a bit about consumer hardware afterwards, but uh, um, so Hardware Club started with the idea that we were going to be more than a, a venture firm, more than a traditional venture firm. And one of the things that we did um, was uh, trying to partner with uh, retailers because we wanted to understand better channels. We wanted to be understand better how products that um, uh, would come out of startups that were members were going to uh, end up in stores and what would be the experience for customers. So we started uh, last year, actually, we started a partnership with Harrods in London. Um, so that's actually on the third floor of uh, Harrods for those that have been in London. Um, we brought in 20 members out of our community um, and we created that store, that experience. Uh, we spent a lot of time um, training staff, trying to uh, tell them not to try to sell products, but demo uh, and create experiences for customers that would come in store. And, and we actually learned a lot. So that was a great experience for us to better understand what happens in a store, what um, not early adopters on Kickstarter, but what um, uh, tourists that end up in a store like Harrods think of a new gadget, a new piece of technology that is uh, $100 or $200. And we, we actually learned, learned a lot through that. So we're going to come the, to the subject. So um, I don't want to sound too, uh, too dark, but you know the past few months have been quite hard, and 2017 was pretty hard for uh, consumer hardware. Um, I actually had the idea of this talk. Um, when, when I read the, the a great study, actually, uh, that was done by CB Insights uh, a, few, a few weeks ago, um, that was, you know, the idea was coming back on a few uh, failures that we've seen a few um, over the past year. Um, some of the stories you know already, I'm not going to come back to, and we probably don't have time to, to go through all of them, but you know, Juicero was a great example. Joe Bone is probably the, the, the most funded company to ever uh, uh, go bankrupt from, from one day to the other. Uh, we've seen you know, uh, a few examples this year, like Pebble and Halo, um, of companies that did not do so well. And um, uh, on our side, um, we've also seen, um, so that's basically, um, our deal flow. So that's basically companies that apply to Hardware Club and, 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 uh, and go on our website and apply. When we started in January 2015, we basically had 75% uh, of companies that were in the consumer hardware space, uh, so selling direct to consumer. Uh, I looked at that um, before coming here and preparing this talk, so it's actually not for November 2017, it would be a bit hard to know now. Um, but the last 30 members that we, on the last 30 members that we onboarded, 29% only were consumer hardware, which is actually quite interesting. It shows that the, um, the whole ecosystem had changed. We see more and more um, um, industrial IoT, more and more um, consumer, um, sorry, hardware startups on the, uh, on the supply chain side, uh, more and more medical startups. Um, but yeah, the number of startups that are actually uh, trying to build consumer brands is, is, uh, is falling, and that's interesting uh, to try to understand why. 
Um, and, and some of the reasons, actually, uh, that, that CB Insights were, were, was, was giving in the study um, that, again, uh, you guys should, should check out. It's really interesting. They're pretty basic. I mean, there's nothing really that uh, we can, you know, um, we're going to um, um, discover here. Um, you know, the, 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 well, there's, you know, the reasons here, a lack of consumer demand, high burn rates, uh, lack of, of interest, uh, product strategy mistakes could be applied to many startups um, to some extent, and, and not only consumer hardware startups. But what's interesting is to see that there are many, many reasons why hardware startups might, might fail. It also shows that um, one of the things that's really hard with hardware is that you need to master, you need to be good at many, many different things. And that's one of the things that uh, uh, explains that some of the startups in the field uh, actually uh, had trouble and, uh, and uh, uh, came uh, under under uh, issues basically. Um, so one of the one of one, some of the issues that we've seen and some of the the things we, we realized having this tour at Harrods um, um, were basically pretty basic. But you know that's kind of um, uh, our lessons learned on our side. Um, so when when we, we we were trying to get feedback from customers uh, that wouldn't buy products. Um, many would tell us, for example, I like the product, it's nice, but it's just too pricey, it's just too expensive, um, I cannot buy it. You know, in the end, customers have a limited budget. On Kickstarter, we sometimes, on Kickstarter or other platforms or pre-orders, we sometimes get the illusion that um, people are happy to pay a price that's not realistic, and when they get, uh, when products get into stores, um, well, reality comes back, and, um, and that becomes one of the issues. Um, one of the other uh, issues that we've uh, seen and one of the other reasons why people wouldn't buy product in stores and when, one of the reasons why I feel a lot of consumer hardware uh, startups failed is uh, customers, they, there was an issue on the product market fit basically and a lot of custom, customers told us, I don't need this, I don't think that's, that's nice, I like it, but I, it's not something that's, uh, that's, um, that's good enough or that's solving an issue, that, a problem for me that I actually need to buy. It. Um, and, and you know that we're going to come back to that, but that's, I think that's one of the issues um, that, uh, and a lot of startups starting with product and not necessarily with problems. Going back to what uh, uh, the previous presenter was saying, um, and the last issue that, uh, that that we've seen is a lot of the, the consumer hardware startups that started um, didn't start thinking uh, of how they would uh, create a sustainable business with good enough margins that they could actually. Um, go through all of the different channels and, and, uh, and build a business that, would be, um, that, would, that, would, that wouldn't need uh, to um, um, raise money uh, on, a, on a systematic basis, but trying to build a profitable business. That's one of the issues that we've seen uh, for the failure of many uh, consumer hardware startups. So uh, I think two years ago, we were prob probably on the, on the peak of that uh, consumer hardware hype cycle. Uh, we're probably on the bottom side, which is a good news, actually, because that means that we can only go up now. Um, the, the idea is that uh, all those failures and that there's not one week now where we don't see a company, a hardware startup fail and, and, and an article about it, um, is that um, it takes time um, to build a product, it takes time to build a brand, and you need quite often to have enough money to be able to, to, to actually uh, uh, sustain um, until you're able to uh, get to a product that is actually uh, going to become a leader, uh, a bestseller. And uh, I think um, in the next few years, we're gonna see good successes. We, we see some companies inside the club, inside our members that are actually doing pretty well. Um, so uh, that's probably just not to sound too gloomy. Um, I think there's some hope uh, for the future. One of the things that we need to keep in mind as well is that we see a startup fail in general. You know, so um, every time we see and we read an article about a consumer hardware that failed, uh, we need to keep in mind that you know that's what startups do. They fail. Uh, some do extremely well, uh, and we talk about it. But a lot of startups fail. And when you're a consumer hardware startup, usually you went through Kickstarter. Um, people talked about you. Um, when those companies fail, there's a lot of press about it. I see a lot of um, B2B SaaS companies that fail as well, but they don't necessarily get the same coverage. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, that said, there's definitely a, a problem. We're not gonna say that everything's perfect and that uh, there's, there's um, you know, uh, 
um, you know, everything is okay in the in the in this in this space. There's definitely been some issues. There's definitely been some startups that uh, that failed. I think there's probably an issue linked to two um, growth models that were um, adapted by uh, by other startups. Uh, one was the lean hardware startup. We're going to come back to that uh, afterwards, and the straight to growth uh, model on the other side. So a good example of a lean hardware startup. So a Pebble decided with a bit of money. They went to Kickstarter, raised some money there. Uh, used that money to fund their development and you know, created a story that unfortunately uh, ended uh, uh, not so well, but could have been actually a, a major success. Um, Juicero is an example of a straight to growth uh, kind of model. Um, on the other side, so a startup that started by raising a lot of money, more than 100 million, and um, from there tried to um, developed a product, got it to market, and um, didn't get the success that they were trying to get. We're going to come back uh, on some of the reasons why. So, um, again, this is one of the, uh, this is just a scenario I'm, I'm, that we've seen a lot, because we, we, we obviously see a lot of companies that come to us and pitch us. Um, there are some companies that were successful with this model, so I don't want to sound like it's, uh, it's impossible to grow um, with this, um, you know, using that model, but um, we've seen quite often a few, you know, startups coming, uh, raising a bit of money, uh, and then launching pre-orders or crowdfunding too fast when they just add a working prototype, having no idea how they would scale that, or how they would manufacture the products. Um, and that actually um, ended up by uh, them having to use the money uh, from their pre-orders to um, fund their development, which means that when they got to um, uh, develop products, they ended up with no working capital to actually fund manufacturing. And um, we've seen a lot of companies come to us at this stage and say, hey, um, you know, we're trying to raise one, two million to actually fund uh, our company now, and we have these many units to ship. And usually that's not the position you want to be. Uh, in and you know most VCs are actually quite afraid of, of this position because you know it's uh, it's a position that um, that is quite risky. You know um, the um, issue is that and and one of the assumptions that behind this model that was actually you know we did some presentations and we actually participated in in it I think becoming popular but. Um, there was uh, an assumption that pre-orders could lead you or could mean or could, um, you could use that as a proof uh, and go to VCs to raise money. And actually, that's no longer the case. Uh, right now, if you, if you raise five, 10, 15 million dollars, and we've seen a lot of examples of that, uh, and go to a VC, they're gonna be afraid. They're gonna tell you it's great. Um, ship your products and come back to me um, when, you, when you have, um, not only ship now, but usually it's like when you have data, when you have user engagement data, when you know uh, um, what customers do, what is the return rate, and, and, and quite often that's, that ends up in a chicken and egg problem where startups are like, yeah, but I need the funding to actually ship. And when we see those situations, quite often, a few months later, companies uh, fail and, and have to close doors. Um, I don't have so much time, so I'm gonna move uh, uh, slightly faster. Um, the other model that we've seen, and, and Juicero was a good example of that, is a team of rock stars starts a company. They, pro, they, they, they sometimes have experience before the sold company. So uh, they raise a giant round. Um, they spend a lot of time trying to develop a product. They quite often overdevelop the product. Um, and they come up with this strategy that's always like super secret, uh, that is always a stealth mode. Um, and when they launch their product uh, and get articles in, in, in all the press, no one cares. They only sell a, a few thousand products. Um, we've seen that quite a, quite a, quite a few times. Um, and then it's hard because they already have a very high burn rate. Um, they have trouble um, um, changing their strategy, so they try to cut price. Uh, that's what uh, Juicero did. They actually went from $700 to $400 in terms of pricing. Uh, but it's quite usually it's too late um, and too hard to pivot, so they, uh, they end up failing. Um, so that just means that money is not um, an ersatz for uh, testing the market. Uh, quite obviously, you need to try to uh, get and test the market early. Uh, big money comes with big expectations, and quite often people tend to uh, respond to those expectations by overdeveloping a product, spending too much money and too much time. Uh, developing solutions which they don't know if there's a, a uh, product market fit for. 
Um, so, you know, uh, just, I was just, uh, you know, finishing by a few ideas on, on what could be a, a, a new playbook, because I think there's huge opportunities still in the space. Um, and, and, you know, uh, even though we, we spoke about a few things that don't work, I think there's, there's, there are some startups that are doing well. We have some of our members that are doing incredibly well uh, in the space, and, and I'm going to try to share some of the, 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 the things that they did. Um, I think one of the things that, if I was to start a, a hardware company tomorrow, consumer hardware company, um, I would try to go and, and, and ship uh, small but fast. Um, so the idea is not necessarily if you want to sell a million products, you need to, to go and try to get a million, dollar, a million pre order uh, in terms of units and then ship them. You try to first uh, build the first product, put it in the hands of customers, and then iterate from there. Um, that's pretty basic, uh, but we've seen very little. Um, very few hardware startups do that, and when it did, it actually made a difference afterwards. Um, the second thing, and, and, and I'm, again, that's exactly what was said before, so I'm not going to say, I'm, you know, like basically start with a problem. Customers don't want to buy products, they, they have problems and they want to find solutions. So if you're able to buy, to build not, um, not a, a hardware product, but a hardware enabled business that is going to solve this problem by providing a solution that is not only about pushing hardware, but creating a, a, a business that is, and Peloton is a good example of that, that is going to pr provide through hardware, and, and not only usually through hardware, uh, a good solution to your customers' needs, uh, then you're in a position, in good position to actually uh, build a, a good business. And the third thing is something pretty basic, but um, we've seen a lot of uh, hardware startups miss, miss that, is that, um, margins actually matter a lot, and, and some of the companies that, that started with uh, margins that they thought were going to be 30, 40 percent ended up quite often with margins that were 10, 20 percent, which was not enough to fund their operations and fund the, the, you know, the development of the company. And especially in an ecosystem, in, in, a, in a period like this that's quite hard, where a lot of VCs uh, don't want to invest in consumer hardware anymore, I think it's really important to build a solid and healthy business where margins are, are good enough, are built into the product, so that um, profit, profitability is something that is, uh, um, that is attainable, that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that can be uh, achieved uh, within a foreseeable uh, future. That's something that when we see startups come and pitch us uh, uh, with this in mind, that definitely makes a difference because we know that they're not going to be dependent on the ecosystem getting better or uh, VCs changing their minds, but they're actually building something that has uh, more chance to, to survive. I think that's about it. Great, thank you very much. Very interesting. Um, I don't know if I missed if you alluded to this, but do, do you see any significant differences between the US and Europe in terms of, because I know you guys work all around the world, um, in terms of um, how entrepreneurs go about building those businesses? Um, yeah, I think one of the things, one of the chances that European entrepreneurs have is that they've never had the same access to capital as uh, US entrepreneurs. So they've always had to be uh, more clever and more um, 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 smart with uh, resources. Um, so I'd say, you know, we've seen a lot of companies in the US, especially uh, with higher burn rates. Uh, so uh, especially since a few months that, you know, uh, it was harder to uh, pitch VCs and go and raise more money. Um, it's, it's affected other startups in the US more uh, deeply than in Europe. Um, but apart from that, I think you know, uh, the situation is, is pretty similar on both sides of the, of the, of the Atlantic, um, unfortunately. Great, thank you very much. Do we have uh, one question or two? So, so tell us again, um, so if you join Hardware Club, what, what is the deal as a startup? What do you get and what do you give? Um, it's pretty, you know, um, so when you join Hardware Club, um, if, you're, if you're accepted, again, we only accept 5 to 7% of startups that apply. Um, you get access to a community forum uh, on Slack, uh, on, on Basically, that you're going to be able to ask questions about very specific things that I, usually I wouldn't have answers to. Uh, but we may have an expert in a company in China or in Japan or in another country that is actually very good at, at uh, and has already a good res response to that. 
Um, so that's one thing, and then you get access to, to a network of partnerships that we've built. That's over, uh, a little more than 120 partnerships now uh, on two sides. One is uh, uh, manufacturing, so we have about 60 partners on the manufacturing side, and that includes people like Foxconn, JBL, Flextronics, all the big guys, and, and smaller, more specialized uh, manufacturers that are going to work on cameras, batteries, things like that, uh, that you know, kind of um, open uh, fast track access to, uh, to their facilities or their services to uh, Hardware Club members. And we have the same kind of partnerships on the, on, the, um, on the retail side, basically. So distributors and retailers, people like Amazon, the US, uh, Harrods, Best Buy, um, Target, um, JD.com in China. So um, yeah, the whole idea is that you're able to leverage that. So we're not necessarily going to be very hands-on with companies that, that join the club. They get access to all those resources and then they are going to have to use it. Um, but basically, it's also a good way to kind of uh, start working with us. Um, and if we, you know, we're gonna look at those companies, see how they evolve and they do well, then you know, at some point we might invest in the company as well. Or we might just help them. You know, um, sometimes they're just too late, too late stage or too, or too early for us, but we we'll always try to, to, to be helpful, basically. Very good, and uh, you mentioned that some of your companies were doing quite well. Do you wanna mention, I don't know, one or two that uh, are performing very well? Yeah, I mean that um, you know if you think about uh, some 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 startups, some members of the club, I think you know companies like uh, Tracker, for example, that's building a you know consumer uh, hardware business that's doing you know very well. And um, Tracker is speaking at this event in December. Yeah, um, just a plug. Um, yeah, you have good people here, um, and uh, so uh, Tracker is one. We also we all, you know we had companies in the club like Misfit that was acquired. Um, more recently, uh, companies like Canary that, is ac that are actually based in uh, in New York. Um, yeah, there's there's and some that like Print, for example, that's one of our portfolio companies um, that has been you know growing quite fast since uh, since uh, since they started. We're pretty impressed with them. Um, yeah, so there are some businesses that are doing well, uh, and you know, like I obviously I see some of the reasons why startups fail, but we also see a lot of consumer hardware startups do well and they don't necessarily get the same coverage. Uh, I think it's all a question of cycles as well and you probably have some startups in your portfolio as well that are doing you know, uh, quite well, but you know, um, unfortunately for them, they're gonna have to uh, go through this cycle and, and you know, um, uh, make sure that you know, they're not too impacted by, uh, by, by this. Great, thank you very much. This thank you, Matt. Thank you, appreciate it. Thank you.